Good afternoon from New York City to all our viewers in North America, Europe, Romania, and anywhere in the world. And welcome at the new edition of the Leon Ferraro Conferences, one of our permanent programs dealing with uh, topics relevant on both sides of the Atlantic in the company of uh, Romanian, American, and international experts. Today's, um, uh, in today's edition, we will um, uh, discuss about how um, culture, American culture, society, uh, and arts have been um, perceived, uh, interpreted, conceptualized, and taught uh, in uh, Romania about the quality of um, a Romanian scholarship when it comes to um, a wide, um, a comprehensive definition of uh, American studies and about the circulation of um, Romanian ideas and arguments um, about um, uh, American society, culture, uh, ideas uh, on the international level. And we believe we have the perfect interlocutor for this um, uh, conversation. Uh, and it's my pleasure to uh, welcome um, scholar and author uh, Cristina Kevereshan, the uh, vice rector of uh, the um, University of the West in Timisoara, and uh, one of the, um, um, the most innovative leaders in um, uh, Romanian um, academia. Um, Cristina Kevereshan is uh, associate uh, professor of um, American uh, literature, um, culture, and civiliz civilization at the University of the West in Timisoara. She is the director of the um, American Studies MA program at the same university. She was visiting professor at the Kafoskari University in uh, Venice. She uh, was a um, fellow of uh, Salzburg Global Seminar, uh, UCD, uh, Clinton Institute for American Studies, and Cornell School of uh, Criticism and Theory. She was also a Fulbright Senior Scholar at Harvard University, and she's currently Fulbright uh, Ambassador. Uh, she mm, has mm, written extensively on uh, American studies uh, topics. She's the author of um, eight books and uh, numerous um, articles um, and uh, uh, translation. A true powerhouse when it comes to American studies in uh, Romania. Uh, Cristina Kevereshan, uh, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. This presentation is more than generous. Uh, and uh, I hope we will not disappoint tonight. It's not about the powerhouse, but it's about generating interest in a field that is so interesting that it far surpasses my own preoccupation. Um, I, I could have gone on and on, you know, with your presentation, because obviously you have done uh, more than that. I, uh, I love your screen in the, in the back. Uh, it's, of course, my, uh, my home hometown. I'm... Um, um, I wish I could see it, um, you know, soon, but with this uh, pandemic, uh, travel has become such a complicated thing, such a nuisance. I'm trying to locate my home, but, uh, you know, probably it's too, too dark, but um, I, I love it. I hope you like it. Mine. Um, Yep, and my uh, alma mater with the heart there, yeah. University. This was a pandemic photo of the West University of Timisoara showing love to all our friends and all our students oh. during lockdown last year. So that is why we wanted to use it tonight. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brilliant, you know, I recognize it so well, um, you know, as my uh, former um, alma mater, one of the, um, one, one of my alma maters. Um, Okay, so let's let's get down to business. Um, of course, we have uh, Romanians have um, um, entertained a, a long curiosity towards uh, America. We have been uh, studying uh, the United States, various aspects of uh, 
the American society, culture, arts for systematically for um, uh, probably 100 years. Um, on, on your opinion, um, what uh, American cultural forms have been uh, proved more exciting to us, more interesting? Literature, film, visual arts, architecture, lifestyle, popular culture, gastronomy, whatever. What do you think of it? Well, as, um, as you have just introduced me as a professor of American literature and culture, of course, that academically speaking, I, I specialize in these fields. So I, I strongly believe in, in reading and interpretation in context. And that's why I think that all of the aforementioned are, are extremely important. And one of the things that I always teach and preach, so to say, is that particularly in the case of American writing, it is extremely difficult to, to regard it as a divorced from the social, political, and the, the historical background that has inevitably influenced authors in time. But wow. on the other hand, if we if we look at the reception of American culture in, in Romania, and I believe generic, generically abroad, uh, there are additional factors to take into account. And they do have, uh, have to do with this conglomerate of elements uh, mm -hmm. that shape the perception of various types of audiences and at various points in, in time. So if we look at that from that point of view, of course, Romanian perspectives on this American dream uh, uh, kind of ideal has, yeah. has always been one way or another mediated. Because uh -huh. as, as we know, and as you, of course, at the, the, the Romanian Cultural Institute in New York know in particular, uh, on the one hand, we have the immigrant stories. And as you said, for more than for more than a century now, these stories, the stories that we send back home from the United States have been delivered by relatives, by acquaintances with yeah. firsthand experience of the of the United States. And these are people who, who left their home country for various reasons, financial, religious, political, et cetera. And uh, afterwards, they chose to sink roots into the open and democratic environment that America has always advertised itself as. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, of course, apart from this, this personal input, which is always the most impactful and convincing. Uh, and of course it can contribute to constructing and deconstructing the American myth. There is also the influence of various types of media upon the representation of, uh, of American culture within and without the United States. And you started mentioning the century. I believe that of course at the end of the 19th century, the transition towards the, the 20th century, the, the major primary influences were the written text, either yeah. fictional or non-fictional yeah. discourses that Very communities so. had access to. But in the meantime, of course, the, the social transformations, the historical, the cultural transformations have brought to the fore new forms of expression, mm -hmm. new forms of communication. And, some of them have become more impactful than others in terms of their general accessibility, in terms of their uh, impact on audiences. So throughout the century, the 20th century, and now at the beginning of the 21st century, of course, we are looking at the beginning of the third millennium at um, all sorts of discourses starting with the early 20th century with the rise of the movie industry, the rise of the advertising industry, radio mm -hmm. and so on. And then all sorts of either major media contributions from uh, uh, the, the journalistic side to gaming, so to say, yeah. things that have to do with the representation of American culture, um, creating a, a type of national image that is on the one hand, easily identifiable as, as American, but also creating a particular type of expectation in a way from the United States. Uh, and of course, you mentioned gastronomy, you mentioned lifestyle, uh, you mentioned all sorts of things that- Well, hamburgers and blue jeans, you know, I mean, we yeah. got to talk about that when we are talking about the circulation of, Roman of American ideas in, uh, in, uh, in Romania. 
that has become, particularly since I work with young people, I work with, uh, with students, I work with people who are full of life, and to them, very many times, popular culture seems like a way of, of liberalization, of democratization, so to say, a sort of a reconsideration of what had previously been considered high or canonic. Uh, or lofty, so to say, even in terms of <laughs> oh, I love this word. <laughs> from literature, right? So you know, from the law, the younger generations, and they are they are increasingly free access to all sorts of sources and the internet and news outlets and social media and so on. Um, these things have reshuffled in a way the ways in which uh, the spread or some would say the globalization and the commercialization of American uh, culture has influenced this sustained interest of, of Romanian audiences, but also other audiences outside of the U.S. for the, the entire Americana type of construction. Right. Yeah. So, so you you have uh, at the beginning there is the the written text, and you know all we know uh, comes from that direction. And then you have other forms, uh, you know, also you know pop culture forms, as you as you said, or uh, other forms that mediate this perception of the United States in um, in Romania. But is it generational? I mean. Can we talk about, you know, uh, like periods when, uh, you know, some American films are more exciting than others or, you know, it's, it doesn't have any, any logic? I think it could be, I think it could be generational, but then again, I would probably dissociate the, the generational thing from the Romanian uh, dimension of it. I mean, I think okay. America's appeal in general tends to be generational because it has to do a lot, as we said before, it has to do a lot with context. And for example, yeah. this semester, I teach uh, great American writers of the 20th century. Well, going through the 20th century, when teaching, let's say, the canonic American writings, you have to go from the jazz age to the beat age to the, the post-Vietnam War generation. Right. So, you know, all of these things, of course, have to do with the kind of discourse they produce and also the kind of reception they, they generate on the other hand. So I think generation is very important in terms of the source and also in terms of the, the receiver and the receiver in a way. Because, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, you talk about the reception, you know, it's, pro it's th there is an age for everything that America has to offer, probably, you know, something you would love more, you know, in your 20s, uh, maybe something you would appreciate even more in your 30s and 40s. And, you know, in an older age, you might look at several things. I mean, it, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, perspective. Um, but definitely these 100 years have been um, somehow fragmented in terms of the, the circulation. Of course, you had, you know, uh, a big gap to a certain point during the communist times, you know, when it was quite difficult to, um, to um, sustain this circulation of forms, ideas, symbols, um, um, linked to the United States in, uh, in general. But uh, you are running um, an MA um, a program in American studies. Of course, you are very, very active in what would be the reform, the development of Romanian academic uh, life in general. You are, of course, in the leadership of uh, one of the best uh, universities in, uh, in Romania. How, how do you assess the um, availability of American studies programs at the um, university level in, uh, in Romania? Right. So, of course, there are, there are, again, there are several points to be made. And of course, uh, while my administrative position might be temporary, my uh, involvement with American studies is definitely here to stay. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 you can't do much about it, you know, that's, that's for life. <laughs> so that's for life. So I definitely need to point out that, of course, you've, you've graciously invited me here as a, as a leading Americanist, but I cannot dare to speak on behalf of all uh, American studies programs in Romania. But I can tell you a couple of things about- Yeah, but you look around, you know your people, so, you know- Of you... course. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we can we can talk about things that I practically obviously know from from the experience of managing the American yeah. Studies Master's program at the uh, the West University of Timisoara. Uh, and it is a program that actually uh, turns uh, 17 this year. So, you know, we're still in our teenage uh, year. Well, and, it's, uh, quite a, it's quite a number for a, uh, an MA program. It's not, I mean, it wasn't born yesterday, that's for sure. It is, it is. And yeah. it has been a very interesting adventure. And you mentioned the fact that there were discontinuities in the American um, reception, so to say, mm -hmm. in, in yeah. Romania. Of course, the, the, the part of the interesting adventure that is connected to that is, uh, is the post-1989 change that happened in Romanian higher institutions of education. And that comprises a whole new orientation or reorientation or reshuffling of goals of principles of study programs of curricula in, in general. And uh, of course, American studies is part of that because um, before the, uh, the 1989 uh, revolution, and I'm going to say revolution because uh, I am from Timisoara, so we, uh, we, uh, we still embrace that word uh, gra gladly. I but use it all the time. I'm from Timisoara too. Of course. <laughs> Being there, done that. Indeed, indeed. But uh, you, you already know that the, let's say, traditional English department, at least in, in Romania, used to be uh, more uh, either language oriented or maybe wow. uh, partial to British culture as a, let's say, steadier indeed. kind of, uh, kind of uh, influence. But of course, American studies programs would have been not just chronologically, but also culturally improbable before 89 and of course politically impossible so <laughs> of course. under under the communist regime as we know any connection to to the united states would have been frowned upon and uh, to put it diplomatically uh, <laughs> and the, this kind of systematic study of the menacing other um, would have been uh, out of the question uh, so that's why, of course, this this program and many American programs, American studies programs in Romania are, as as I said, in their teenage years, uh, because that was that was the context. And uh, throughout the past about two decades, we have witnessed uh, the rise and the expansion of American studies in uh, Romanian universities and all the, the major universities. We have a consortium of major universities in, in uh, Romania, which comprises the Bucharest, Iași, Cluj, and, uh, and Timisoara. And all of them have American studies programs included in their, in their curriculum one way or another. But what is interesting is the way in which American studies is viewed in a way, because um, according to the, the, uh, the institution that organizes such programs and according to its orientation, they mostly have indeed stemmed from the what we call language and literature programs. But now there's a new orientation towards applied mother languages, or there are students that come from, uh, let's say, uh, close fields such as uh, journalism or history or political science who have an interest, who have a good command of, of the language and who have an interest in this particular part of the world, in this national culture, they want to make connections. Uh, so this has been quite interesting in terms of the evolution of the audience and the student interest and so on. And then again, of course, this interest has increased even in terms of uh, the academic exchanges because mm -hmm. both the teachers and the students became more and more interested in crossing the ocean physically or, or mentally, uh, in bridging the gaps, in uh, having international mobility one way or another, uh, the opportunities of study and research on location, so to say, in the United States have, uh, have increased. Um, interest in terms of MA students or PhD students or academics participating in, in conferences, in academic events, uh, having library grants, etc., research grants uh, has, has increased as well. Uh, so all of these things have given, let's say, more, more access to the land of hopes and dreams, to quote Bruce Springsteen, who is also part of our American <laughs> cultural background, always. So, Yes, the United States has, has remained obviously a, a global player that exerts a lot of fascination, mm -hmm. even from the point of view of, of the academia. 
And uh, American studies programs, if we were to sort of profile our, our students, because you asked about the, the appeal for students. That's right, um, yeah. It's usually the profile of the student that is willing to go beyond the surface to overcome prejudices, because you know everybody has an opinion on the United States. But yeah. how many people do actually know what they're talking about? Yeah, that's true. Very much and so. This is, yeah. this is, in a way, in the, the background profile of the American studies oriented student, somebody who's, who's open to dialogue, to argumentation, somebody who, who's willing to embrace new perspectives, to understand the in-depth phenomena that sometimes might seem baffling, contradictory, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, phenomena that uh, maybe not so many reliable sources can provide informed points of view upon. Uh, and American studies programs gradually, but surely as they matured in, in Romania, they have managed to, to offer um, a plus, so to say, in terms of uh, providing critical and theoretical approaches mm. that in a way ground and, and uh, let's say, properly shape a more mature and more responsible position towards all these, uh, all these challenges. So at a time when, as I said before, everybody seems to have an opinion on the United States, right. it is American studies program that, programs that in a way aim to ground their students' opinion in yeah. a diverse and more applied knowledge of the American realities than the ones offered by the philology programs per se, or of course by the ones that are offered by other kinds of media. In, in, in a sense, um, the, the way I understand it, it has been a shift in, the, in, in, in terms of the paradigm of, uh, um, of um, learning about the United States and also teaching you know, aspects of uh, American society, culture, arts from you know, purely um, a, a literary one or a literary centered or canonically centered, as you say, on a big books right. of American uh, literature canon to a more um, more interdisciplinary one, a more um, a meeting point of various uh, academic uh, disciplines, which I think it's a um, it's a very good thing. Uh, so, are are they popular for the uh, for the prospective students? Uh, these programs, not only in Timisoara, but as you say, you know, they are uh, offered in all major uh, Romanian universities. How how popular are they? Well, it, it depends uh, what you compare them with. So, of course, there are always yeah. trends of uh, trends of popularity and uh, and certain faculties and certain discourses that are more popular than others at, at certain points. But for the American Studies program, at least in Timisoara, the, the great news is that we've had a steady interest. And uh, as you probably know, in Romania, at least at this particular point, if you do not have a certain number of people that actually enroll in a program, the program cannot be organized. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we have been organizing this program continuously since 2004 shows you that there is interest yeah. uh, in, uh, in such programs. And of course, you need to, you need to struggle for them and to, you need to, you, you, you mentioned the word uh, connected to my evolution that I thought was interesting. You said I, I was an, an innovative leader and I don't know if it's about me or whether it is about the background that forces you in a way to always come up with the new ideas to, uh, to persuade people that this is a path worth, uh, worth taking in a way. And, okay. and there is a shift in paradigm which might contribute to that, I think. Uh, it's uh, it's true because uh, all these programs had to be invented from scratch, and uh, and there, I know uh, I know because I was um, in my previous life an associate professor of this uh, program at the university um, in Timisoara, and I know how difficult it was to um, uh, to build it and to um, to. Um, shape it in a way that is very, uh, very diverse and it's very interesting, that is very complex in the, in the sense that what is, what is really taught there, you know, and also getting out from a um, philologically centered uh, paradigm. So no, uh, definitely I was, I was thinking of that because you and your colleagues at the University of Timisoara, but in other places in Romania, 
while um, building these uh, these programs, a lot a lot of creativity had to be employed, had to be invested in order to uh, uh, to succeed. How um, uh, how important was the American uh, support in creating this um, or in furthering this uh, uh, institutional uh, institutional? paradigm change in, in creating these centers of American learning in Romania? Well, first of all, let's take it theoretically, because you, you mentioned how we, we needed to create things from scratch. Well, of course, there were no very clear cut models in within Romania. So of course, we needed to, to look around. And that's why many people realize that although American studies programs were initially as you said, sort of the natural successors of literature-based uh, oh. programs, uh, it was soon that people realized that literature was a wonderful nucleus. Uh, as I said, literature teaches you and, and prompts you to learn a lot about context. But of course, American studies is a lot about context and understanding things yeah. in, in, in context. So that's why this sort of multidisciplinarity came about in terms of the American studies programs. And that's why even if they can still be labeled because you know the Romanian system uh, is not as flexible as the American one in terms of proposing new classes, we tend to be more, um, how should I put it? Uh, steady and uh, and firm in the in the in the number of hours you teach per week, etc. There are all sorts of delineations and and rules and regulations that are not just Romanian because now we mm -hmm. we do yeah. we do follow European uh, guidelines in the field, uh, but uh, all sorts of things that have to do with uh, with things from from the number of uh, of hours taught per week to credit management to joint degrees and so on and so forth are things that we needed to take into account when we when we built these programs. Uh, and um, if you think of the content of the program, and here I'm going to go back to, to the question about the support that we got. If yeah. we think about the content of the program, I can give you examples again, not speaking about all programs in Romania, but knowing what the structure of most of the American studies programs in Romania are, I can give you a couple of examples of um, subjects that are taught in such a program. So, of course, one of your questions was related to how important uh, literature still is as what started such programs. And of course, you still have quite a number of classes that refer to, I don't know, from the roots of American literature, from the Native Americans to, to right. the 21st century poetry, drama, all the things that in the three years that you have in the Bologna system for the BA, you don't really get time to, to talk mm -hmm. about. Um, mm -hmm. We branch out into topics such as, I'm gonna give you a couple of, of examples, communication and media in the US or film studies or uh, discourse and language, social movement, civic culture, political and institutional discourses, gender discourses, cultural history. Wow. So these are obviously things that, that offer the students a far wider angle and more yes. generous mm -hmm. angle on approaching the United States. And then, and this is where most of the help comes in and came in and came in very handy. Uh, we needed to offer our students because these students, not only are they open-minded, but they are usually um, very likely to do research. They are very likely to go on to PhD programs in the field. They, they want to study, they want to go to the United States, they want to, to look at things in more depth. So what needed to be added were classes having to do, on the one hand, with academic writing, because of course you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, shape a discourse without the basics. But then things such as critical and theoretical discourses or methods of cultural analysis or uh, scientific research, research methods, and so on and so forth. Very and this is where most of the help, so to say, came in because in time we developed uh, strong collaborations with both uh, the US embassy. 
uh, that has provided help for American studies programs in terms of, for example, uh, library development grants. Mm -hmm. Because of course, before 89, the support for uh, for you know American book acquisition was null and void, so to say. So we, <laughs> we developed our libraries not just at the university level, but also at the department men mental level, uh, aided by that. And another thing that I do need to mention, and you mentioned it in your in your presentation of me, uh, you mentioned the fact that I was a Fulbright scholar at Harvard, and you mentioned that I'm a Fulbright ambassador. Right. Yeah. I, I, I can show you. I can show you proof of that. Actually, my no, uh, I, I believe you totally. <laughs> to show you how uh, how this branching out works, my uh, my project at uh, at Harvard was a project on ethnic American literature, which was something that hadn't been taught before in uh, in Timisoara and in uh, in many universities. There was no. Um, collected work of a, let's say, both chronological and kind of widespread uh, uh, type of approach in that direction. So that was one of the reasons I believe that my project was chosen because it was sort of an introduction to the field to a kind of audience that did not have a lot of previous knowledge uh, about that. So this, yeah. is, uh, this is the product, actually. This is the book that, that ensued from that, uh, from that particular project. Is, and uh, going... I suppose it is uh, available on the internet, right? It to, is. Uh, it for is. people it who is. would like to, uh, to, to learn more about it. But because you have, uh, you have transitioned to, um, to another topic that I think is very, uh, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. Um, uh, you have talked about, uh, you know, teaching American studies in, um, you know, shaping the institutional, uh, the institutional form of these um, of these studies. But of course, a lot of research um, has been done uh, on, you know, um, aspects of American society, culture, and art. Uh, in uh, in Romania, there is an infrastructure not only of um, uh, centers of learning, academic centers of learning, but also um, publications, um, conferences that bring together um, scholars uh, of uh, American um, uh, studies. There is um, there are series publications, translations that are um, uh, that are uh, distributing um, American ideas or American forms and so on. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, the research uh, aspect of American studies in Romania. And I, I would like to know how, how do you see the circulation of um, American arguments and ideas about various topics here? of the Americana. Uh, of course, you're, you, you have uh, written extensively, you, are, you have published uh, in the United States and elsewhere in the world uh, regularly, but um, what, about, uh, what about the entire American studies community? How present are we as Romanians in a global dialogue uh, about uh, American aspects? On the mm -hmm. academic level, of course. Well, I think we're. I think we are probably where I said the American programs are. So, in in a transition from from our teenage years to full maturity, <laughs> in the sense that, of course, there are people who have experienced a lot, and there there are people who who have practical and and theoretical and and administrative uh, experience in the field, and of course, there there are growing generations that uh, that come. Uh, to to follow in the field, so I think the field is in uh, is in full development right now, mm -hmm. and I think the development has been quite quick. In a way, parallel in the development of the American nation, you can see it at a, as a micro scale in what happened in Romania after after the revolution. So, of course, contributions of our specialists have become uh, stronger, and of course, this also has to do with what you asked before about things being generational. Well, mm -hmm. 20 years ago, we wouldn't have had access to databases, for example. So research was a thing that you would have done very um, in a very difficult manner, and sometimes it would have been with antiquated sources. 
I remember yeah. my, my first research visits to the United States, you mentioned Cornell, for example, or, or NIU. Uh, when I was there, my American colleagues were always wondering, what is this woman doing buried in the photocopying room? They could not understand. As an, as an discovered JSTOR and the uh, uh, immense power precisely, precisely. of the divine so they JSTOR. could not fathom out the fact that JSTOR was something that was unheard of at, <laughs> at that particular point. So, you know, you know it was expensive, uh, Christina, because you, you had to have a, you, as a university or as a, a private uh, scholar. You had to pay a certain fee in order sure. to have access. It, to you that. still do. You still do. Mm -hmm. But this, 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 this has a bit to do. This has a lot to do with with the way in which you, you Romanian universities have developed in this direction. Yes. Because mm -hmm. the support for research in general, and of course American studies is part of that, uh, has increased uh, immensely. So of course that has to do with the fact that that the field has grown. And then to go back a bit to my idea about uh, being a Fulbrighter, being a Fulbrighter has its its uh, its advantages from both sides because one of the major supports that American studies programs in Romania have had uh, has been from the Fulbright Commission. So in terms of shaping our program, it was essential that from 2004 on, we had a regular uh, visiting professors. We had annual uh, visiting professors um, that were uh, specializing in all sorts of areas that of course they knew not necessarily only better, but they knew firsthand. And this gives credibility and this gives reliability and this attracts students because you you mentioned that because, yeah. you know, it's it's OK and it's nice and it's cool and it could be uh, challenging to to listen to uh, to your uh, old Romanian teachers telling you stuff. But on the other hand, when American professors come in and they stay for a semester or for a year, you have access to a different way of looking at things. You have access to a different way of teaching. You have access to a different uh, mentality. And, and what's interesting is that the American Fulbrighters, because they were the major types of visiting professors, we've had others, but the Fulbright has been continuous. Um, it is not about a particular ideology. It mm -hmm. is about looking America for all, uh, from all sorts of angles. And uh, in time, we've seen how much impact that had on the students, but also on our body of, of, uh, of professors involved in, in the field, because this has contributed in a way to the way in which we shape our discourse and we shape the, the lenses through which we perceive American culture. And this has been tremendous help. And uh, of course, you know some of the names, but you've had uh, uh, people like uh, Rodika Mihaila and, uh, and uh, now Mircea Dumitru, Mihai Moroyu, Corina Danaila. They've been a wonderful team who have actually helped this, uh, this, uh, this entire field of study and research grow in Romania by putting in this uh, support for um, uh, for academic programs that actually are grounded in a reality that is not just a bookish, lofty reality, as, as we said before, <laughs> yeah. but something yes. that is is palpable, something that it's, is... Uh, it's palpable. become the, the world of the day, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. But how, 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 how much do we publish uh, uh, we as Romanians uh, mm -hmm. in international, uh, in um, American studies, uh, in international publications, for instance, American or international, do we have, do we really have a presence in this respect? I'm not talking about you because you are, mm -hmm. you are a regular and, uh, and on several mm -hmm. uh, important publications and you, you currently teach uh, in the United States and elsewhere uh, uh, in, uh, in Europe and not only in Europe, but what, what about the, the entire community? How present are we? Uh, well, I think, in I think, uh, I think there, is, there is a growth to be noticed in that, uh, in that direction as well, because of course you cannot compare it to countries or communities that have had a longer tradition. Yeah. But on the other hand, this whole idea that publication is important, that spreading your knowledge is important, that going international with the results, with the outcomes of your research is important. This is something that not just the academic community has learned and it has seen the benefits of, 
but this is something that the students are starting to grow into. So now we've had the, we've had the master students, we've had doctoral students who have already gone into the kind of research uh, work that uh, previously it was just um, established professors, so to say, that were thinking of doing. And I will give you an example of, of, uh, of, a, of an initiative that is not yet international, but it's very well coagulated. And again, an, in, uh, an initiative that we've had support from our American professors in. Um, this year, we have managed at the West University of Timisoara within the American Studies programs, we have managed to publish the fifth volume in the American Studies series of uh, works that are entirely authored by our master's and PhD students. Mm. And these are collections, I can show you a couple of examples. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is the, the latest in, uh, in the field, it's called Discourses of Americanness Bridging Non Fictional divides, precisely because we are talking. <laughs> yeah, about talking about the the, the shift in fiction, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or uh, the first one that was uh, simply entitled "Studying America in the 21st Century." Very straightforward. Very, <laughs> very straightforward. It was the beginning of the series, but yeah. within no, uh, it's very effective. No, it's... we started in 2014, and by this point, we've had five volumes of more than 200 pages of solidly researched, peer-reviewed. You, 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 you gotta show the them, field. you know, because they are so impressive <laughs> that you have to look at. The, uh, this is another one. It's called A Sampler of American Concerns, and it, it is multidisciplinary because it yeah, is, it is um, definitely seen as a sampler. And this is, again, a way in which we collaborated with, um, with um, we've had American input because we've had uh, uh, peer reviews from uh, our professors, we've had proofreading from our professors, we've had the uh, joint coordination of papers. So this American studies uh, field offers you a lot of opportunity of working together and learning yeah. how to work together. And, and you know, crossing not just physical borders because everybody dreams of going to the US and no, you know, not everybody does uh, okay. physically, but it, it's about, you know, uh, crossing mental borders as well and, and, and reaching out in ways that are harder to do in standardized, more traditional kind of, uh, kind of programs. So I think that's, very important in terms of the evolution of, and this in, in genders publications and people who start doing this as students will most of the time go on doing this as professors. So that's why I'm saying that we do have something to say. We are definitely growing. Uh, and I think Romanian contributions are becoming more and more relevant as no, about, yeah. the relevance of, of research and international publication becomes more and more uh, interesting for universities as well. Because of course, universities now are ranked according to various criteria. And each year you look at all sorts of international ranking and so on, and international publications are part of that. So people are aiming to do that and they, they become more aware of the fact that this might attract um, financing for their institution or for their own research. And of course, the interest in doing that in, and in, in sharing the results of their, uh, their research goes far beyond publishing or, or even just defending a PhD thesis within a very small committee, yeah. which is how things used to be back in the day, so to say. <laughs> Look, I was, um, I was looking through these um, publications, not only this one that you have uh, shown, but also the program of some conferences of uh, American Studies uh, Association, Romanian American Studies Association. And I, I have been struck by uh, the prevalence, maybe prevalence is too much, but uh, the, um, I've often uh, encountered words like trauma, loss, uh, identity collision, uh, colonization, racism. Uh, why so bleak? Why so dark? Why so political? <laughs> well, I would have to say that we are in the middle of a pandemic, so probably, <laughs> probably that might have something to do with it, but of course, it's not a happy topic. But, but in a way, you are right, and I think it 
it has it definitely doesn't have to do with Romania and Romanian approaches. I think this is this is a, a sort of tendency of the past decades in the academia that have featured a rise of uh, critical thought mm -hmm. that tends to take into into account things that had been either obscured or maybe completely obliterated from uh, from the uh, mainly, if not completely, aesthetical, specialized, uh, technical analysis of, of literature and discourses, so to say. Because, oh, again, know, about the context, you, you, it's very important to stress this aspect about the context, about making connections with the real world and not only staying well, within the paradigm. Years ago, you, you mentioned the, being a student at the West University of Timisoara, and I'm sure you remember that the main approaches came from, I don't know, from narratology, comparativism, mm -hmm. semiology, right. close reading, so things that are more technical in a way. Uh, but putting things in context has grown in terms of academic approaches. And if you look at, at trends, so to say, you've had uh, postmodernism, for example. Postmodernism draws attention particularly to the dissolution of identities as we used to know them, right? To fragmentariness, to uh, a world that has long lost uh, its unity, its defined principles, its cohesion in favor of a personalized search for meaning in a way outside of conventional norms mm -hmm. uh, and socially or even academically assigned roles. Um, you have post-colonialism because you mentioned uh, yeah. you mentioned yeah, that. I, I saw the word. I know. Right. So that, that has insisted a lot upon the uh, upon rereadings and rewritings of the great literature, as you called it, mm -hmm. as canonic literature through the lens of the alternative voices, right? Mm -hmm. The empire yeah. writes back bringing back everything that used to be marginal, bringing it to the fore of the discussion, annihilating the traditional dichotomies that had been embraced for ages. So, you know, the center, margin, self, yeah. other, minority, majority boundaries have been, have been blurred and analyses have um, have sort of oriented themselves to a, a less uh, less reductionist, less unrealistic from this point of view. Uh, kind of uh, kind of context. So it's it's been a reconsideration of uh, you know what they call nation and narration, so to say. Uh, and uh, these shifts in paradigm, I think, have yeah. led to this kind of perspective that is is bleak in a way because of its infusion of a type of context that has been dominated, let's say it, for quite a number of years by rewritings of moments of crisis, of trauma. Uh, mirroring uh, lots of very serious events from, I don't know, from the social, cultural to political to uh, ecological disasters to all sorts of things that have been drawing attention, not just of the media, but also of these more academic kind of uh, kind of media that we have at uh, our disposal. But, uh, would you would you argue that uh, there is a um say an overarching ideology of the American studies in, uh, in Romania, something that is, I don't know, binds together, you know, all these approaches, all these uh, perspectives on uh, all things um, American, or, you know, there is, a, you know, also a fragmentation here, you know, depending on the preferences of a particular scholar. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the American studies in Romania is, um, I don't know, is closer to a certain ideology or has a uh, certain ideological look, or there isn't mm -hmm. such a thing? I would probably steer clear of ideology, at least in the in the rather politicized sense. And okay. we, we were talking before about uh, you know about things that have uh, have uh, influenced our uh, our points of view and the way we express ourselves. Even political correctness could be could be invoked here because you know it's one of the hot topics, and of course that could be the topic for a completely different conversation. But that is something that you need to uh, to to navigate in a way when teaching. Because teaching is not uh, not all the time. It's probably most of the time not necessarily expressing 
your own opinions and outlook on things by trying to provide perspectives that are as comprehensive and as balanced and as professional and as uh, realistic, so to say, as, as possible. So I would say that American studies programs, because they are so complex, mm -hmm. uh, they uh, they try to keep this, uh, maybe if there's an uh, overarching ideology that is diversity uh, in a way, and this, this kind of openness and plurality and the open access to all kinds of voices and points of view, because that's what we want for, for our students. And in a way, that's how Americanness is perceived in Romania, as the freedom of freedom of expression, freedom of understanding, freedom of, of, uh, of reading and interpreting uh, as you wish, as long as you have the proper argument. So what we try to do in the American uh, Studies programs is to offer uh, proper, uh, proper arguments, to offer reliable sources, to, to point to critical read, uh, readings and, uh, and, and even practical experience that are, are informative. Uh, but I would say that uh, this is also why the American studies are probably seen in terms of their success as a field uh, as a very flexible, very rich, very liberating kind of kind of study field and career option. Uh, the more informed our graduates are, the less likely they, they prove to fall prey to the assault of fake news and, uh, and manipulation very and misinformation. Yeah. And, and this, is what, this is what's important to us, to, to provide that kind of cultural openness that uh, later on gives you the, the critical kind of, uh, of lens, if not uh, you know, a kind of uh, ability to sift through all of the perspectives that are thrown at you and, and uh, manage to choose your arguments uh, wild, wisely. Uh, yeah, I think it's very important, uh, this, uh, this point, um, because we, um, sometimes often see because America is so powerful and so present in our lives uh, there is uh, you know a growing uh, you know growing uh, uh, number of uh, prejudices or half truths or even uh, even this uh, fake news you have uh, you have mentioned and when the understanding is grounded in an um, in-depth understanding of various aspects, even in, from a critical standpoint, I think the, the conversation uh, changes uh, dramatically. And I think this is, uh, I, I find it extraordinarily useful uh, to, to have um, a, um, uh, an analytical mind forged, shaped by a program like this, so that at least you are aware of these aspects, and then you can, of course, choose your uh, standpoint or uh, you know refine your uh, your vision. Um, we are uh, uh, we are um, slowly <laughs> getting to the uh, to the end of our uh, conversation. I'd like to ask you because I've uh, I've uh, um, often um, often asked my, our guests um, about this um, um, this Romanian attitude which is quite uh, quite unique towards the united states we are uh, one of the most pro american countries in the world we are consistently scoring very high when it turns to a positive attitude to towards the, the united states how do you explain this consistency uh, consistency uh, this uh, this um, uh, positive consistent positive um, attitude Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I would say that probably as, as it happens everywhere in, in the world, these barometers that measure everything from, from happiness to particular liking for a culture or the other, tend to, to measure according to, to predetermined standards and expectations, and then the results may vary according to, again, to generation, to the point in time, to the political regime. You wouldn't have said that we are pro-Americans uh, 30 years ago, I guess. Uh, and, and the media discourses that we're exposed to and the, the kind of audi audiences that, uh, that you, you may refer to. So, Romanians may or may not rank so high in terms of their pro-Americanism, depending on the generic mood at a particular moment, I would say, or the, the, the way in which the, the general sentiment is, uh, is assessed. But I would 
say that definitely we remain quite taken, quite partial to this sort of American ethos and mythology uh, one way or another. And I think that that happens because of the constant influence of everything American on, uh, on everyday life from the communal to the individual to the particular, from the public alliances to the private spaces of communication, social media, even entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, America Especially, pervades mm -hmm. our experience, existence in ways that, that may not always be that evident, but if you look at them closely, they, they are there, they are omnipresent. Uh, and America remains in our imagination as, as uh, on the one hand, a cultural construct, but also a, a living reality that that to many is something that they want to experience firsthand. Uh, th there is this Romanian dream, or in some other extreme cases, a counter dream of America that is still present. And I would give you another, let's say, final example that has to do with students. Um, we still have, of course, at this particular point, as you know, we still have uh, Romanians that are temporarily or permanently migrating to, to the West for better opportunities and part of this is a program uh, i don't necessarily want to to name it but is a program that steadily st sends romanian students to the united states to work for the summer so to work for a limited amount of time and at the same time uh, travel uh, travel and get to know the United States firsthand. And that means that on the one hand, yes, you are there and you can experience the, the mirage uh, and those postcard uh, picture perfect images of America that have been constructed in a way culturally. But at the same time, you do have to, uh, to acknowledge the, the striking paradoxes, the, the inequities, you experience the firsthand, I don't know, the glory and the gloom uh, because you mentioned the gloom before. So, uh, so this, is, this is part of it because America is, is still, as we said, the land of hopes and dreams, but it has become a growing reality because people have, have had the opportunity to experience oh, it, uh, to experience it uh, more, not, not just an, at an academic level, but also uh, at a personal level, uh, mm -hmm. I would say. So, you know, the, the magic of this promise uh, of America does live on, but at the same time, we do know that ideals are always there to, to replace and to surpass. So you never know when the trend, uh, when the trend uh, gets new nuances, so to say. But yes, it's still there as an attraction, as a story, as a, as a, as a permanent creation of the myth. And this, this also has to do, if we have one more minute, to, uh, it has to do with going back to the beginning to, with literature, with translation, with the fact that American culture reaches us and has been reaching us uh, in translation even before the revolution. So, you know, wow. from the latest, uh, you know, um, do it yourself guides to classics such as, uh, I don't know, Fitzgerald Hemingway and uh, Salinger, for example, it's it's still there in, in the way in which it shapes. There is a huge number of uh, American translations, uh, not only, I mean, in Romania today, and not only in terms of fiction, but also nonfiction, academic yeah. books, also do-it-yourself stuff, you know, all sorts of of books it is, um, are, are translated. And you are right. I mean, it's very, uh, it's very, uh, very present. I wish uh, we could say the same thing about Romanian books in the American publishing houses, but you know, uh, it's a continuous effort, and uh, and maybe uh, we can um, we can do something uh, much better about. We can, it. we can all contribute to the growth of that. <laughs> That's right, and definitely with um, the graduates of the American studies, with the scholars of the American studies, uh, with people like you and your colleagues, the the presence of Romanian. Uh, um, Romanian uh, uh, scholarship uh, in, uh, and also the presence of Romanian imagination in the United States is uh, much more uh, accentuated, is much more underlined. Um, well, um, I'd, I'd like to thank you for, um, for spending this um, afternoon in the United States and evening in uh, in Romania with uh, with us, it's been a very very interesting um, interesting conversation. Uh, we wish you good luck with the American Studies program and with your efforts 
uh, in the leadership of the West University in, uh, in Timisoara. Uh, I, as some of our viewers know, this uh, program is um, produced in uh, partnership with um, uh, Trans Concentric of uh, Washington DC, a communication a company founded and led by the Romanian um, American communication expert, um, uh, Raluca Feldenkris and she is celebrating her birthday uh, today. So I want to end up this uh, conversation by wishing her all the best, good health, and, uh, and all, the, all her dreams may come true. Thank you, uh, Christina. Thank you, our viewers everywhere uh, in the world. Um, see you next time.